Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Uh, welcome learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and today uh, we are discussing cell specialization. It is in the topic of the cell, a topic in Form 1 biology. So welcome. Um, uh, we need first of all to define what is cell specialization and uh, just to give an example uh, we have different people who have specialized in different fields we have different people who have specialized in different fields some are doctors others are lawyers and so on and so forth so when you talk of the cell specialization the cells also do get specialized they become modified in a certain way so that they can perform a certain specific function so in this case we can say that cell specialization is the modification this is the modification of the cells to perform certain specific functions. We'll give some examples and we shall start with the plant cells. We'll start with plant cells. Uh, for instance, we have the root hair cell. So the root hair cell is elongated. It has a long root hair. And that has an importance. That modification has a certain importance. And it helps to provide a large surface area for the absorption of water and mineral salts. That's why you find that roots grow very long root hairs so that they have a wide surface area for the absorption of water and mineral salts. So root hair cell is a specialized cell. So you'll find that a root hair cell will look like this. So this is the root hair that is elongated to provide a large surface area for the absorption of water and mineral salts. So the other parts are there, the cell wall, uh, the cell membrane, and so on and so forth. But our main emphasis is on the root hair that is elongated to provide a large surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. Another example of a plant cell that is specialized is the palisade cell is another specialized cell and this one contains numerous chloroplasts so this palisade cell has very many chloroplasts and that modification is to help carry out photosynthesis so they contain numerous chloroplasts containing chlorophyll for photosynthesis, uh, for manufacturing food through photosynthesis. So that is another modification. So that's another specialization. So you will see a palisade cell. The vacuole is there, the nucleus, 
then there are so many chloroplasts. Oh, so you find that it has chloroplasts that are many so that uh, it can act as the site for uh, for for photosynthesis uh, we can also take another example of the epidermal cell and the epidermal cells are flattened and deposited with cuticle, uh, deposited with waxy cuticle, to minimize excessive water loss, to minimize excessive water loss. So that's another specialized cell. So we are saying that different cells are specialized for different functions. We also have the same uh, for animal cells. Specialized animal cells. We can have an example of a red blood cell. And this one lacks the nucleus and is biconcave in shape to provide a large surface area for oxygen transportation. That is another specialized cell. So you'll find that uh, uh, if you look at uh, a red blood cell by concave in shape, with a sunken center, no nucleus. So there is more space for the transportation of oxygen or for packaging and transportation of oxygen. Another example, we can talk of a muscle cell that has numerous mitochondria. We mentioned that when we are talking about the mitochondria earlier. Has numerous mitochondria to provide energy. for movement because muscles are basically for movement so the muscle cell is also specialized in a certain way another example is a nerve cell that is also elongated has an elongated axon to enable transmission of nerve impulses. So each cell is specialized in a certain way. So you'll find that uh, the axon is the nerve fiber of a nerve cell is elongated
So we have a nerve cell that has an, an elongated axon for transmission of nerve impulses along the nerve fiber. So those are different ways in which the cells are specialized to perform different functions or to perform certain functions. We have seen the plant cells, for example, the root hair cell, the, paris, the palisade cell, the epidermal cell, animal cells, we've seen the red blood cell, a muscle cell, uh, a nerve cell, and so on and so forth. So they are specialized in a particular way so that they can be able to carry out a certain function. So an assignment, So the first question, draw a well-labeled diagram of a palisade cell. B, explain how the palisade cell above is adapted to its functions. And then number two, name three specialized animal cells. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.